Hello everyone, this is Neil, and it's been a while since I've done a Vassal video, and I thought I was actually done doing Vassal 101 or 201 videos, but I uh, thought I'd do another one here because we have a new um, cool thing you can do with Vassal with the information table that I created that I've been using for quite a while. I created it just in HTML, and I kind of use it on my own. And I released the HTML recently, and uh, but to use it, you, you kind of need to know some HTML and some CSS, which is cascading style sheets for, for the web nerds out there. In order to change it over to whatever scenario you're playing, you need to go in and actually edit the HTML, not necessarily the CS, CSS itself, but the CSS elements within the HTML to get everything to work out right. <clears throat> but uh, Kai, Kai Glanz, uh, approached me. Um, he knows JavaScript. I barely know JavaScript. I, I mean, I can, I could get into it and tweak it if someone already wrote it, but for me to write code from a blank slate would take me a long time. Anyway, he runs the ASL Assist website, which some of you may know. And he approached me and said, hey, that's cool. Um, why don't I write the JavaScript uh, backend that will drive the input to create these tables so people can use these without having to know anything about HTML or, or CSS or digging into it and changing it. So I said, sure, sign me up. So it looks like we're done, at least with version one, as I'm calling it. And this is what it looks like. And um, I'll post the URL where you can access this all throughout this video. It'll be at the top or the bottom or one of the corners. So just look for it. Um, so here you can see there's basically this form and all you do is fill out your inf information and it generates the table um, shown to the right here. Um, and you can do a vertical, so you can do a horizontal or vertical version, which would look like that, depending on your map configuration within Vassal. Now, one thing to note about the entry form on this web page is when the web page gets to a certain width, this table will drop down to the bottom here. Let me show you. So let me minimize, or not minimize, but make this window smaller. See how it disappears? It'll pop down here. And that's to keep it from uh, when you minimize a table like this. This doesn't happen in Vassal. This isn't web page HTML thing it will scrunch it all up and it won't look accurate to what it's going to look in Vassal. So try to have your window maximize as much as possible so you can get a, get a good preview of what it's going to look like um, after you fill it in. So let's, uh, let's just go through and fill it in. I'm just going to fill it in with the example info in here. Um, it'll just make it easier so I don't have to pull up a scenario and fill it in. So let's uh, leave it on Arial for now. Let's just start filling this in. So scenario ID, scenario name, date, I'm just going to put Jan 20th, 19, what was it, 45? Um, and you can see it over on the right, it's starting to fill it in. And the location was, is, see, Juiced Holland, let's just put Neil, uh, I think it was the Brits, ELR, let's just put three, three for San. Let's play against my buddy Scott. Three, four, doesn't really matter. Um, so here's all the nationalities you can pick. German, German SS, British, British Commonwealth, which is everything but British, essentially. American, U.S. Marine Corps for PTO, Russian, Italian. Anything that's allied minor nationality would go under this choice. Same with Axis minor. It would have just became too exhausting to list every Axis and allied minor combatant, putting them in this drop down and including all their nationality logos, which populate the table up here as well. Uh, Japanese, French, Free French, Finns, and then we have some Forgotten War stuff here, UN, North Korea, and then China. 
as well. And you, you can see as I pick a nationality, the colors on the table on the right will will switch and the logo will switch. So you don't have to worry about where do I get this image? How do I change this color? Uh, all the images are being pulled from my server. That's where they're, they reside. So you don't have to worry about anything. All you have to do is fill in uh, your information here and you'll be good to go. Uh, I don't remember how many turns it was. I'll just put I'll just put a half, eight and a half turns. So it'll show you what it does when you have a half turn. So you can see it automatically puts in the half turn indicator and it'll put in the end indicator in the cell as well. And then here I am just going to put a bunch of gibberish like this. If you click out here, it'll fill it in like that. And you just, you've just built your, built your template. So you've got scenario number name, all the information, who's playing, who the combatants are, ELR, SAN. Got boxes for all your indicators for your game, phase wheel, and a turn track, and the victory conditions. I recommend don't going too crazy with victory, condition, victory conditions. I know some of the scenarios can have really long ones, so you might have to summarize it to get it to fit into the victory condition box. Now let's switch to vertical and see what it looks like. It should keep all the information, it just switch, switches to vertical mode. Now, one thing you might notice on the bottom of the vertical mode, it includes the, well, I included it in my original template, obviously, because it's the website that I run. But if you don't want it, um, when you click on the vertical version, this checkbox will appear that says display bottom logo. If you click that, it'll get rid of it if you don't want to show it. If you want to leave it on, that's cool. Um, but it also adds a, a field to show uh, the date that you played it. So let's just put March 2021, and you can see that it's it'll keep track, or you can keep track of uh, what day, month, year you played this particular scenario. Now, let, lastly, let's go back up to the font. Now that we have this built up, let's switch on. This is on Arial right now. So let's switch to uh, Verdana. Arial and Verdana, everybody has that in their standard Windows build. That's Those are fonts that come with Windows. Um, and you can see the fonts did change to Verdana, except the victory conditions box. That will always be Arial because it's small and compact, and, and I didn't want to mess with uh, changing fonts within the victory, victory condition, condition box. Now, when I originally designed this, this info template, I was using uh, Russo One, which is a Google font. It's a font that gets pulled from Google servers. It doesn't reside on your machine. Um, the problem with that is in Vassal, it does not recognize the import feature to import a Google font to display. The HTML render engine, engine as I've mentioned before, within Vassal is pretty primitive. It won't be able to recognize this. I'm going to switch to it, but the only reason it works is because I have the font installed on my machine. On my, on my machine, so you can download that font for free from Google. Put it on, put it in your font folder, and it'll show up, and it'll look like this, which is the font I used when I originally designed this. So, if you create this template and you use it in your Vassal layout, and your opponent does not have the Russo One font installed on their local computer, they won't see it. They'll see the Arial version, most likely. This is what they'll see. But you'll see this if you have Russo 1 on your computer. So I'm going to put a link somewhere in here. Um, it's not in this video, but I'm going to put a link in here with a link to the Google page where you can download the font and you just dump it in your font directory. And you can start using the Russo 1 font. So. With that said, I know I, I talked for quite a bit there. There's not much to it. You just fill in your info. You come down here and you say, show hide HTML. And there's all the HTML needed to create this. You don't need to look at it or worry about any of the contents. You just come over here and click copy HTML to your clipboard like that. And then you switch over to Vassal. And let me pull out a label, any label, does not matter. Just pull one out. Right click, uh, edit the label by right click and go label, and then you can go shift 
insert is the way I do it. There's multiple ways to paste your contents. I think uh, Shift C or Control C. I use Shift Insert. Whatever your preferred method of pasting things, use that and hit OK. It takes a second while it renders, and there's your information table. Now let's do another one real quick. Let's lop off this bottom logo and date. It'll shorten it up. Lop it off, copy to clipboard. Let's just clone this. Move copy over here. Right click, label, paste. And it should lop that bottom off. Yep, it's gone. So it's a little bit shorter version of the table. And if you don't like my logo on there, I totally understand. You can you can nuke it off. Now, real quick, let's do one more. Let's generate a uh, horizontal, but let's use the Verdana font. And you'll notice that the option to clip off the bottom logo is gone because it doesn't exist on the on the horizontal version. So there's a horizontal. Co copy the clipboard. It's clone. Uh, let's just move it there. Edit the label. Paste. There you go. That might be something you put at the top of a scenario. If you have like a one board scenario or a half board scenario, you might do a top version like that. Just depending on your on your map layout. That's it. We made it easier for you to customize your uh, vassal layout with all the, not all, but pretty much most of the information you would need to play a game. Now, it won't populate the the counters, the tracking counters within here. So you still have to go into ignore all of this HTML that got pasted in here. You don't need to worry about that. So you'll need to you still need to come in, out here and pull your, you know, your wind wind indicator, wind direction, and and plop it in here, right? Or your your phase track. You need to plop it in here. Still need to do all that, but that doesn't take long once you've got this set up and when you plop your your uh tracking counters in here i recommend stripping all the labels off them you don't really need them and it, it cleans it up and makes things aligned much better okay so there you go if you have any uh questions or comments put them in the comments below in the video or you can go to my website asl-players.net There'll be a post about this, an article about this. You can post questions or comments in there. I appreciate any feedback you may give. Please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, it enables me and encourages me to keep doing videos in the future. And until then, Rolo and use the template.